Lori Bell, Laura Lai Juno in, in Second Life. And I've been here for 10 years and been very involved in uh, libraries, library projects, um, and also in teaching uh, for credit courses in Second Life. Um, most recently, I taught for San Jose State University um, a class, an immersive class on Winter Times, um, Renaissance Florence, and also Revolutionary France. And I think virtual worlds provide an awesome opportunity for people to learn about all kinds of things um, within an environment that they they wouldn't have maybe in real life. And I want to give several examples of that. Um, the first example I'll give is uh, the medical field. And as many of you probably know, simulation and practice doing surgeries, um, doing procedures, conducting interviews, all kinds of things um, are huge in the medical field. And the more practice somebody gets, the, the better they get. And when I was working recently at a school of nursing, I worked with um, the teacher of public health to set up um, a simulation within Second Life. Uh, the nursing students were going to do home visits where they um, go and visit someone in their home who, you know, maybe just got out of the hospital or need some kind of nursing care. And before they went out for the first time, the teacher wanted them to have some practice um, viewing environments and, and talking with people, typical people they might talk to in the situations. So the, the teacher told me what kind of um, details she wanted in the simulation, such as um, the patient was a gentleman in his 60s who had just gotten out of the hospital, he had diabetes, COPD, several other conditions, and um, that they lived in a, a trailer home. And she told me all sorts of um, problems to put within that environment, such as uh, there were insects and there were all kinds, she wanted all kinds of food out that were bad for diabetics. So I set up um, several environments for her to bring her students into where they would have to note the environment and ask the patient questions about their condition um, to get information they needed to proceed. And uh, so we did this, and the students really enjoyed it. They got the practice. Um, they got to learn what to look for, uh, the questions to ask, how to respond to questions. And then done, we had a really good discussion on um, you know, what they found, maybe how they could have handled situations differently. So that was a hands-on experience that they got to have within a virtual world, um, doing something before they had to actually go out and do some practice and um, get some experience doing it. Um, another great example of immersive learning took place in um, class at San Jose State. Uh, the students were immersed in a period of history. As I said, uh, Renaissance Florence, Tudor Times, and Revolution France. And of course, it's it's not like real life, but in real life, it would be possible to um, put someone within that time period. So uh, I worked with um, Snow Scarman, who was a, a student here, and we created um, an environment like that period. And when the students came in, they had to choose a character of that time period, someone well known or someone they made up, and research that character, what they wore, uh, where they might have lived, um, type of work they did, the type of um, culture that they lived in, and then they had to participate in events as that person. They had to create um, a home that that person might have had. They had to interact with others as that person. They had to create a display 
And so many of these experiences that you have in virtual worlds can carry over as practice into other worlds. So, and into the real world and different situations. So they had to create a display of, about that character or the and they had to do a presentation. So not only got the skills of learning the history, but also of creating an environment, um, doing research, um, doing a presentation, and planning a presentation for a certain environment, which is important because no matter if you're talking live or a conferencing system or via virtual world, every environment is a little different and planning your uh, talk for that environment, planning a display, uh, an interactive display for that environment. So students learn all kinds of skills and it was like actually like a face-to-face -face class because we met every and besides learning world skills, they learned all of the other uh, things that we talked about, plus collaboration. And and I wanted to talk about uh, book discussions in Second Life. Um, for the virtual library right now, I've been working on a monthly uh, book discussion. And uh, another colleague is taking that over, but I will continue participate and although libraries in the worlds offer some services than libraries some of the services um, are the same and book discussions and love and promotion of books is one of those so every month different book and uh, a certain time of the month the discussion leader prepares questions um, ask them of the participants, the participants pose questions, and we discuss the book uh, for an hour or so, and it's been really interactive and a lot of fun, and the participants have brought their own backgrounds and questions to the group. And so it, it's been a lot of fun and a great way to promote books within a, within a virtual world, and people read all kinds of formats of books. Some or reading the audio books, some people are reading the print books, um, the ebooks. So if you look at, at virtual worlds and the education here, it's it's taking place in every single field. Healthcare, library, um, science, uh, geography, um, it's taking place all over. And it gives and workplaces are um, setting up experience experience with customer service, um, with the geography of a, a certain um, part of the country, um, with procedures on how to do different things through training here. It's a really rich environment for that type of learner. And have all different types of learners and all different ages. Immersive learning um, is important to a lot of different types of adult learners have to learn have to learn practice have to learn and i i think that it will it will only grow as we go along in these environments become more sophisticated and even more as possible i think i've used my time so thank you and those were just a few examples um email me or i am me in if you want to talk more and thank you to all of you for having me.